So in today's training, uh, this is targeted uh, for the configuration team or project engineers or anyone handling a project or if you are even indirectly supporting a project, uh, this will be useful for you. Again, this is NVR configuration training. So imagine you have already purchased NVR. We are now going to see how to install, how to configure, how to uh, set it up in accordance to your project requirement. It's very simple, but definitely there are certain points which you should be aware of, and that will make the project installation smoother and you can avoid the common mistakes, okay? Um, overall, if you compare, yes, the concept of setting up an NVR is same. You add the camera, set up the recording schedule, and so on. However, the way to go about each product can be slightly different, right? So this is a product training where you are going to learn how to do that in WiseNet NVR. All right, now the good thing is, although we have different models of NVR, the interface is the same. It can be an eight channel, it can be even four channel, or it can be a 64 channel NVR. The interface is the same. The way you configure, add the camera setup is the same, right? We do not have different interfaces. Uh, the only thing that can change is extra features such as you have RAID option or you have failover option, right? A 64 channel will have more hard disk, but Additionally, it may have RAID option. A four channel, you will, may not need RAID. So that particular feature may not be available. But otherwise, the fundamental is the same. Okay. Now, uh, we are right now uh, fo going to focus on the new models of NVR. There are uh, two different uh, NVR series, uh, you can say we have migrated, we have upgraded our NVR platform in the last couple of months. Now, some of you may still have old NVR, some of you may still have the new NVR, all right? Uh, up till this point, till uh, let's say December, we covered the old NVR configuration. The new NVR is almost the same, almost the same, and uh, if you know the new you uh, i mean if you know the old one you can easily do the new one but if you are learning the new one there are some steps which may which are made easier so uh, you may not exactly be able to do the old one so however you don't have to worry we have some training videos for the old nvr uh, the small differences we have put up as a, a video uh, maybe 10, 20 minutes video. You can refer that and get that uh, initial kickstart of uh, uh, of configuring the old one. Plus, you also have the idea of the new one. So it will be, uh, you can say 80% is same, the 20% is different. Now, what is new? What is old? How do you know which is old? How do you know which is new? You can go to our website, hanwa-security.com. <clears throat> There are three things uh, which I always cover. It doesn't matter you're talking, if you're working on NVR or camera, there are three uh, different methods of looking and extracting information from our website, all right? Uh, first is our website, which is our website, hanwa-security.com. If you go to Hanwa Security and type in Google, you will find the first one, dash security, with the keyword global. This is the website. All right. Once you log in, sometimes it goes to the Korean website. You can change it to English. Once you go to English, wait for it to load. Right after that. <clears throat> you can go to video recorders and NVR. Um, that's fine. Okay, this is just, uh, we're just sidetracking a bit. So these are the models of NVR. However, we also have a better uh, display. Um, let's say, support, data center, data center, catalog. Then, okay. 
total lineup catalog try to just download it or you can view whichever you're convenient with I will just download it this can Should be done now. Okay. Deploy. So going back to the topic, how do you know which is the old NVR and the new NVR? Okay. By looking at the NVR itself physically, you will be able to tell whether it is the old one or new one. The hardware construction is changed. The processor is uh, upgraded. It's more faster and stuff. Uh, so let's go to the NVR section. If you go to the contents, you will find here uh, NVR. Then uh, you okay. First, we'll finish that. Let's go to NVR content. Camera, camera. Here we go. NVR. NVR. Okay, so let's bring this. Okay. The picture is not having a very good resolution, so I'm going to uh, show you the difference in a different. In a... Okay, so what you're looking at this model, just observe this model. NVR. NVR, okay. okay. Let me open the data sheet. Okay. Now this this guy, if you see the front, the front is completely closed. Okay, it, it has a door, you press the door and then the hardest chassis will open. So the picture will look like this. When you open the door, the hardest are inside, vertically mounted, vertically mounted. Vertical, horizontal, actually it's fine, but the front door is completely closed. All right, now let's go to the new one. If you take a video recorders NVR, the new model, <coughs> Yes, uh, let's take a PRN. Data sheet. Okay, I have a better image. Let's go here. This is how it looks. Okay, go back. The old NVR is. having a closed front door, right? And the new NVR, okay, um, the front door, it will, uh, the, you can say the front door is slightly, the front panel is different, okay, first thing. Second thing, um, the exhaust is from the front. In the old model, if you go back to the older model, <clears throat> okay. 
if you see the top view, the exhaust is on the top of the NVR. Okay, there is some exhaust here, and the fan is also at the back. For the new one, there is no exhaust at the top, it's only at the back and the front. The breathing is through the front, and uh, in the old one, the front is completely closed. There is no breathing, there is no intake of air. It takes the air from the top and then it gives air out from the back. Whereas in the new one, the air goes through the front and it goes from the back. That's one. Then the construction is a little bit more rugged, uh, so better vibration it can handle. Um, hard, because we in the new NVR, the number of hard disk is more. The old one, maximum number of hard disk is only 12 numbers. Let me show you here. <clears throat> Okay, the wait a second. Okay, this one HDD maximum 12 hard disk internal. The new one has 16 slots. You can go up to 160 terabyte. This guy maximum 96 terabyte. This is the highest in the older generation. In the new generation, 16 slots, 160 terabyte, and so on. Okay, and uh, there are other software differences, but that we will see later. Right now we are focusing on the hardware difference. By looking at the NVR, you should be able to identify whether you're working with the new generation or the old generation. Okay, I hope you got the first part clear, identifying physically what kind of NVR you're dealing with. Okay, physically. All right, so based on that, you have to approach the uh, commissioning part or the configuration part. Slight changes in the way you configure. But otherwise, majority of the software part is same. You have RAID, you have failover, you can do scheduling, recording, all that is same. Um, so the menu may move up and down, but that's not a big deal. Okay, the way you install the NVR is change, will change because the old one, like I said, air comes from the top, which means you have to leave, when you mount NVR next to each other, you have to leave one rack unit space. Okay, and uh, hands on, let me bring that document up. So this is the old one. If you have NVR, you have to leave one rack unit space between each NVR because you need some air to breathe, right, from the top. And then at the uh, at the topmost, once you pile everything up, uh, at the top you can leave six rack unit space, and the fan can be again at the top of the shelf. So. Uh, the air, uh, I mean the hot air can go out, all right? Then, this is the ideal. Uh, some sites, they cannot afford fans at the bottom. It's okay, but at least at the top you should have. Then, it can be a glass, it's fine, but somehow air should also go inside. If you're having a glass panel and there's no air entering, maybe you have to air, have fans here to allow air to go into the rack. All right. Otherwise, you can have perforated rack with the you know holes at the front that allows air to go through. All right. Now the new one, the breathing is through the front. In that case, definitely you have to make sure the airflow comes from the front side. Okay, the airflow comes from the front side. So this is how it looks. New design. <clears throat> okay. Now, you know, this training, because we are in the transition for some customers, some may have new, some may have old. So we have to talk a little bit of both. And uh, eventually, maybe next month or next, next month, we may not really talk about the old one. The training will be slightly different. The way we talk about the training is also, will be focused only on the new one. So for those who are finding it a little bit uh, confusing or your first time into the NVR, you focus only on the new one. Forget the old one. Forget the old one. 
don't let it bother you you start working on the new one but those who are having experience with our nvr previously and you are getting trained now for newer projects then make sure you are relating your experience with the old nvr old installation and you can expect some differences in the way you do the new one right so let's go forward okay all right now uh, having covered this let's go to the next one uh, what are the different types of nvr straightforward from the catalog if you go to the main index page in the first few pages you will see product naming rule for an nvr p r n p series p means p series premium series x versatile series q quality series l entry series now uh, since we are talking about nvr uh, this model number prn will tell you what to expect from the nvr in terms of software features okay previously we saw hardware looking at it physically what to expect how to begin the configuration now we looking at the model number you should be able to identify what to expect from the nvr can i expect some failover can i expect some raid can i expect this to have some extra features so that software level is what we are going to uh, identify using the model number all right r and n will always be the same recorder n means nvr <coughs> n means nvr so this is not going to change if you have anything else like p or some some other letter that's not part of today's training that's a different training that's a different product but today we are only focusing on n nvr next 64 <coughs> main 64 channel 32 channel 16 channel sometimes the old nvr will have um, instead of 64 they will just have they'll just have letters three four right so this you can see the uh, you don't have to bother it's an older model but the new one directly the number of channels will be mentioned here 64 means 64 channel just for your information for nvr maximum number of channel we have is 64 we have um, a different type of windows based recorders recording servers which goes 128 that's different that's a vms servers but as an nvr built in um, the maximum number of channels 64 okay. one and zero you can don't have to bother much basically it's about versions d you can keep note it's for dual power supply which means behind the nvr here is a picture behind the nvr there are two power supplies okay why do you care you need to make sure there are two power sockets you need to make sure there is two the electrical contractor ensures there is two power sockets also you can uh, understand maybe you can give it to two electrical source one fails the other will take over or one or you can source it to one to a ups or something like that. okay then b b is for bay it is not going to change four four means four bay each bay will have one hard disk so if this nvr is b4 it means uh, there are four bays of four hard disk 16 hard disk slot okay for most projects for most projects 30 days recording uh, b4 is like 16 hard disks generally not required you may use b2 uh, it should be 80 terabyte for 64 cameras good enough all right some projects may have more like uh, 90 day recording projects 180 days recording they may have more hard disk okay all right even in uh, 8 bay we have raid option but the only thing that is missing is dual power supply is only available in the highest models the high-end models the larger bay models Okay. but raid is available even in single power supply if there's no d it means single power supply there is no letter s okay there is okay that's a different um, the letter s means something else s does not mean single power supply 
it's not like that only d means additional feature of dual power supply okay then there are certain nvrs with a built-in poe switch behind the nvr you can power directly the camera key. you can directly plug it in maybe a small store or a retail outlet showrooms mosques you may have you don't you may not have a switch you will require a local monitoring you will plug the monitor in this hdmi port you will connect a mouse you will have cameras directly connected ip camera <coughs> done okay no need for external cisco or any other switch in that case there are models with built-in poe switch those models must have the letter s it means poe switch if it does not have it does not support poe now one point uh, of course you may be curious to know okay 64 channel does it have poe port no maximum number of channels with built-in poe is 16 only generally we are providing this for smaller projects larger projects they will have switches okay then uh, how to quickly identify if you have model number nvr starting with l and q entry level 16 channel maximum okay x and p x is your versatile series x starts from 4 channel all the way to 64 p is 16 32 64 okay p does not have 4 channel 8 channel directly from 16 x series from 4 to 64 you can say if you have x you may you may not even need q and l because x has even four channel 8 and 16 so why then there is two series for four channel why you have l four channel q four channel and x four channel we'll just see that quickly um, l is intended to be a very cost effective nvr some hardware features are removed it has only one hdmi output <coughs> it does not support uh, more than two hard disks which is okay for 16 channel q series also same but it has two outputs one hdmi one vga okay uh, again this output you don't bother sometimes you most likely will use a pc to connect to the nvr to see the camera so in that case actually you don't have to bother about this port all right it doesn't have even if it doesn't have it's not a big deal for you okay then uh, q series each camera not total camera each camera you can connect 8 megapixel cameras 4k cameras l series 5 mega most of the projects you don't exceed 5 so still l and q is almost like fine good enough 16 channel maximum uh, this guy is uh, for intended for you know even smaller projects where cost is a concern the way you configure is the same l q even x okay next um, x and p series how do you differentiate most of the projects when i say projects uh, uh, 300 camera 500 cameras those kind of projects if you have more than 500 most of them will have service right generally nvr based projects with 300 500 cameras um, today not before before we had to use p series but today x series will be more than enough X series has 64 channel, X series has 16 slots, the maximum available. Up each camera you can give 32 megapixel. Each hard disk you can go up to 10 terabyte. And there are two HDMI slots behind the NVR. It even has PoE port option up to 16 channel. It has a RAID 5 option, RAID 6 option. It supports our AI cameras. It has failover from 16 channel onwards. It supports a dual power supply as an option, which is good for most projects. Futuristic projects, projects which you are designing, or maybe a customer has worked with Hanwha team to uh, focus more on artificial intelligence. In that case, there is a chance the customer will have a P series NVR everything is same everything is same except the p series nvr can convert a traditional uh, p x series or a, no a normal camera it can convert it to an ai camera which means you can do searches such as uh, oops sorry yeah 
if you use a non AI camera, non AI camera such as uh, P series, X series, standard cameras, and if you use P series AI NVR, then you can do search, search for person with red shirt, black shirt, car, type of car, truck, motorcycle, bicycle. I can zoom in and show this. Search for clothing. You can search for a person with a specific clothing color. Okay, remember this you have to use our camera X series or P series non AI camera is fine if you use AI camera it's okay in that case you don't need a P series NVR you can still do this search even with X series that's why it says here AI attribute search what is attribute attribute of the object what is an object human human is an object what is the attribute of the human uh, shirt color pant color is age is gender wearing a mask without a mask what's the attribute of a car color of the car type of the car so you can do that search but you need to use ai camera if you don't have ai camera you can use p series it has a ai chip it has two chips inside to convert a non ai camera to ai okay so most of the projects you may not find p unless it has been proposed uh, intentionally by design but otherwise you may not find this okay now the older projects let's say middle of last year raid 6 option dual power supply option was not was not available in x one year back so that time we were using p series only p had raid 6 it had dual power supply but today even x is having raid 6 it has dual power supply so and more hard disk capability and so on 16 slots so majority of the projects now will be on the X series side. Okay, now let's go to the next one. <clears throat> How many PoE port is coming in PoE NVR up to 16? So maximum is 16 channel with PoE port. And make sure the model number has a letter S. S, it has a built-in PoE switch. We can have a look here. Let's say XRN 1610S. So this is a X series 16 channel NVR with a PoE switch. And you can find here <coughs> how much of PoE budget it has. PoE switch enabled. It supports uh, ARB, we will see all this later on. Up to 24 TB, 16 channels. All right, then let's have a look at. Uh, excuse me. X series. 32 32 means 32 channel R Don't bother about this R and B. Just look at the data sheet and make sure does it have read? Yes <clears throat> B2 means 8 hard disk fine then uh, Does it have any other feature? Uh, N plus 1 failover. Okay supported supports AI search uh, How much of power consumption is required 160 terabyte? What is the power's input? How many monitor it supports? In case storage is not enough, you can expand using iSCSI by third party storage, promise or other storage units, iSCSI port, you can con connect and expand the storage. Then we have a 64 channel RB2. Then we have without R, there's a model here without RAID. Okay, then if you go to P series, 
P series, all of them ha have rate. It's eight support, eight slot, all of them have rate, and uh, may not be having R. Doesn't matter, but just check here whether it has rate. How much of power consumption? LPR search, AI search, and so on. <coughs> okay, bandwidth. What is uh, 32? 32 means each camera you can connect 32 megapixels. That's why it says 32 channel. And we are, oh sorry, this is for 32 channel. Okay. Then camera resolution, each camera can be 32 megapixels. You can connect Hanwha camera or on with camera can be connected. It's called Sun API, Hanwha camera or on with camera. At the end, when you have multiple NVRs, you can connect the NVR using our VMS, uh, SSM VMS. You can use for free and do central monitoring. If you want to connect uh, NVR to a computer, monitor PC, guard PC, you can use. You can install SSM and view it. it the license is free to use because you already purchased NVR. So we don't charge the VMS license. Okay, so far clear. Any questions up till this point? Okay, now let's go to the <coughs> uh, NVR part. When you look at the NVR, you have to also identify first, what is the model number? When you have in your project certain NVRs, identify what is the model number, check how many channels it supports. So let's do this side by side. And uh, to answer this question, ideally it's better you open the full data sheet. So let me take uh, this model PRN3210B2. B2. And uh, data sheet. Okay, here it is. Now we are going to study the data sheet and understand what is the model number. PRN three two zero zero B two. Okay. How many channels are supported? And uh, okay, I think we can right here. All right, PRN three two zero zero B two. Okay. How many channels? Thirty two channel. It's written here. Does it support RAID? Okay. Does it support RAID? If you're not sure, by practice you will learn. But you can search here, RAID. Yes, it supports RAID mode. There is something called RAID mode non rate mode rate mode rate 5 rate 6 yes so it supports rate all right how many power supply does it have <coughs> go to power consumption oh. power inlet yes just one number that means single power supply if you're not still sure you can check the <coughs> nvr 
can zoom in and see there's only power only one input okay one how many network port how many network port it has each nvr you'll find multiple network ports you can see here rj45 ethernet network yeah and uh, interface ethernet three network ports we will study this later each port has its function three network ports okay where is that here three does it support fiber you will not find here any one uh, fiber port sfp or anything like that in this model there's no such thing so no fiber does it have poe port built in search for poe nothing doesn't have because this is 32 channel what is the power consumption of the nbr why do you need to know power consumption based on this only you can design ups based on this only you can uh, tell the electrical contractor for heat dissipation you can uh, also talk about uh, the uh, amperage for that power socket so this is something you may need if you have one nbr it's okay but if you have more it helps to know rack height what is the rack height let's see if it is here rack unit one u two u three u okay it's not mentioned <clears throat> okay you have here height 86 86 in mm so uh, 44 so if you have 86 roughly two rack units you got the idea height is 86 mm so if you type in here it is two rack units so you need each nvr two rack units then heat dissipation is it mentioned here heat dissipation not mentioned okay in that case what you have to do um, go to ptu for how um okay what fine convert watts to british thermal unit per hour you can take this it as a calculator it's fine okay then what is the power consumption at full capacity 205 watt just type 205 convert 700 british thermal unit per hour okay so uh, one ton ac ptu so what is that okay that means each nvr is giving out heat of around 700 British thermal unit but it's not so big 700 looks big but even a traditional air condition can handle 12,000 so if you have a lot of uh, uh, NVRs then you have to keep in mind or if you have a data center with other devices including NVRs then you need to worry about BTU okay how many hard disk slot does it have uh, go to the data sheet HDD um, eight slots, eight harder slot it has. Okay, you have to also keep a couple of things in mind here. Array, there is something called array size, only one array. That means it's a group. If you are converting a rate, it's uh, out of eight hard disks. I mean, um, okay, we will see this when we do rate right now let's not diverge next is maximum storage it supports up to 10 terabyte so maximum 80 terabyte okay done all right now we will talk about the rate rate part while we are here <coughs> whenever whenever you have rate if you are not very much focused on RAID topic, you don't have to focus. It's okay. Um, whenever you have RAID, 
you have to find out how many array is available in the NDR because you we will configure RAID for each array. Okay. And uh, okay, I think it's best we take it later, this particular topic when we do the RAID configuration. So for now, I'm going to keep it on this side. Okay, but just keep in mind something called array. We will come back to it later on, single array. And uh, you will find, let's say, this NBR array. You'll find there are models with two arrays. Each array size is six hard disk. Total, how many hard disk it has? Twelve hard disk. Each array is six hard disk. Okay. So there are there is something called array size, which you can keep in mind. We'll come back to it later on. Okay. Now. NVR and network port in NVR and uh, let's take an NVR Set up. Okay, network. I'm just covering the network part. We will come back to the initialization, other things. Here, you can see in the network port behind the NVR, there are a couple of network ports. Okay, you will find like this one, two, one, two, three, four, four network ports. Then there is a, another model. one two three three network ports so three network ports it is designated as camera port what is camera port camera port means <clears throat> if you have cameras in the network the recording traffic will come through this camera port the incoming traffic to the nbr will come through the camera port what about outgoing traffic for viewing you let's say Right now, I'm go seeing the NVR through web page, right? This is the NVR IP address. I'm seeing through the web page. So I am viewing remotely over the network. You have two options. You can see from the same camera port because you, if you notice, I am logged into 219, the main port, or I can use a different port for the viewing. But recording cannot happen in viewing port. Okay, viewing port, I can have a different network. You can change it to 1.220 also if you want. You can keep it in the same network range. And this is for network viewing. Over the network port, you can uh, connect a PC with a browser or you can connect to a VMS. Um, if you have a viewer or a VMS, you can use that. Okay, and uh, if you don't want to use a second port, it's fine. You can still use the first port for both recording and viewing. Now, what is the best practice for large projects? Anything you have more than, um, or basically, if you have a, a, a remote monitoring, remote means not outside the country. I'm talking about anything you monitor over the network port. You have a PC, you want to monitor. You have a VMS, SSM VMS. This is our VMS, which looks like this. This is our VMS. I have my NVR, XRN, and I want to monitor the cameras. I have another NVR, PRN. I want to monitor the cameras centrally in one location. I don't want to see separately two different monitors. I want to see them together. So I am adding the NVR to a VMS. It's free to use, by the way. If you want to do this, you want you can do playback centrally. You can uh, export video centrally. You can manage centrally. You can make maps and other things. If you want to do this, um, this NVR has to be added to the VMS. Okay. Right now, we're just covering the network port. You don't have to worry how to add here and all that. 
so if you want to uh, use a VMS and add NVRs to it it is good and we recommend that you use two ports one for incoming traffic one for the VMS viewing traffic okay if you're a Dubai based project CIRA related it is recommended you use two ports one for the VMS one for the camera okay the third port you can directly connect to iSCSI storage or you can use this port to connect to the switch and this iSCSI storage also can be connected to the switch and you can expand your storage done rest we don't have to bother leave it as default you don't change anything how do you fix the ip address you can click on setup and change um, address subnet mask gateway you don't change the dns you don't change anything else leave it as default okay done now <clears throat> now let's go to the actual configuration when you have an nvr in hand a brand new nvr you have to use a tool called um, it is a good to use it's called WiseNet device manager the device manager tool allows you to centrally manage multiple devices for example here uh, I can do a search and I can find multiple cameras I have here so many cameras I can discover all the NVRs and so on how to configure the camera you actually have to attend a camera configuration training but here we are only going to talk about NVR configuration all right so here I can search all the NVRs okay now uh, by default NVR will take the IP address 1.200 1.200 and how to configure this uh, you if you don't have a device manager directly type in 1.200 double click it will take you to the web page in the web page it will tell you the default username is admin but there is no password you have to set up the password if you set up one two three four five or one two three four it will say enter a password that is at least eight characters you cannot save this it has to have a complicated password okay what about eight one two three four five six seven eight if I put eight one two three four five six seven eight it will tell me use uppercase lowercase and numbers so there is a condition okay so you can use um, here I am using this combination by the way there is no default password you are setting for the first time so only you know it nobody else will know it okay I am setting up a password capital ad min at the rate one two why it will meet the condition capital letters small letters symbol number it will meet all these conditions so once it meets the conditions good for me so and uh, i will be able to comply to the requirement and see done save it now initial part initialization it will ask you what language English next use the recorder administrator password as the camera account okay if you have cameras okay if you have cameras in the network maybe you have some 50 cameras if you want to add it if you want to add the cameras you never touch the camera it was just opened and put on the network if you want the NVR to add it automatically you can do it but generally we don't really do this because it if you have more than 200 cameras you cannot control which 50 camera to add right so we how do we avoid this we just put any dummy password which does not exist so it will try to add and it will not add anything Okay. Uh, set the password for the default camera. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, here we can just leave this as blank. Okay, let me re clarify this part set the password of the factory default wise net camera 
so um, slight diversion when you have a brand new Hanwha camera even the camera does not have any default password so if you have 20 cameras you have to go and set the password for each of the 20 cameras uh, that's why we have this tool WiseNet device manager you can select all the cameras and set up the password the initial password you can set it up if you don't have the tool you can directly do from the NVR also but the challenge is it will uh, uh, it's okay for this step is okay if you have a new camera you can say use the same password as the NVR and if you find any brand new camera add this password okay no issue next one if all the new cameras if you want to add it to the NVR this is the next step if you have a project with only 20 camera 50 camera and you have 164 channel then the answer is simple you have to add all the camera to that NVR in that case it's okay you can say um, all my cameras are having the password capital ADMI at the rate 1 2 then it will get added but in case you have more cameras if you have 100 cameras and you have two NVRs but you're not sure which 100 cameras should be added all right which 50 cameras or 60 cameras should be added you're not sure in that case just put any dummy password okay I just put something it will try to add and it will fail it will just skip to the next step okay done. next is um, network uh, DSCP DSCP means the NVR will be able to provide IP address it is mentioned here when the DSCP server is enabled the camera IP address is automatically assigned again we skip this step because the NVR will randomly assign IP address to the cameras which is not what we want we want to fix the IP address by ourselves generally we use device manager to assign the IP address as what we want there is a feature called IP assign you can say I want to assign IP from 90 to 104 so each camera will get a specific IP address you can change the order apply by the way this particular camera configuration we are covering in camera configuration training and uh, for those who are interested I have posted it online let me just uh, divert you there so there is a video called you can go to playlist okay this is a channel wisner training unofficial or you can just type here eight steps to prepare your camera Wisner device manager there is a video 20 minute video how to prepare your camera how to set up the IP address how to set up the uh, password and uh, uh, initial other settings how to prepare you can you can find here there are eight steps which we are covering right so that's for the camera so you should actually configure pre-configure the camera before you do the NVR configuration all right but if you have a few cameras if you have very few cameras let's say 60 cameras and only 64 channel NVR you can make use of this step such as automatically add all the cameras automatically create a password same password as NVR for all the cameras then uh, if you want to set up DSCP server for one network it's okay if you have very few cameras so it's fine in that case you can set up but larger projects we don't recommend uh, because you will not be in control of the IP address next the network port I will set it as 214 and rest the same enable online upgrade it's optional whenever there's an internet access it will check whether the firmware is updated and you can update uh, you can disable it next will you terminate blah 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 standard time oh yeah since i've changed the ip address it's going to rest reset okay restart Okay, let's wait 192.168 you have to give it some time because the NVR is now restarting
okay now we are back next is time zone see as you see the nvr itself is guiding you is not very complicated you don't have to memorize anything okay nvr is guiding you just think a bit before you apply however don't randomly apply if you don't understand that's that's the cause of the issue if you're not sure and you take a guess and you apply and then later on some issue happens and then you're like what went wrong you're not sure right because you never understood why you applied certain settings so try to understand um, there is manual there is this video recording training is being recorded there are some YouTube videos so try to understand and then apply if you're not sure ask if you're not sure skip that step uh, make sure you get it clarified before you apply all right next is time and you must change the time it is not good that you put some random time because the recording is based on this time all the re reports are based on this time so make sure you get this set up next is uh, date and time so time zone is done check the date it is not correct so I will change This is fine. Okay, done. <clears throat> okay, after this, I go back to the NVR web page. Okay, it will say there is no camera registered. Although I entered some password for the NVR to register, I entered some dummy password. So it will try, it will not register, and it will just skip. Okay, we'll just say cancel for now. Now let's look at the NVR. This is the web page. <clears throat> you have a white skin, black skin option. We don't have it in the old one, only uh, white in the old one. Next, at the bottom, you have a manual recording option, which means if you're recording on motion, you want to trigger manual recording, you can do, you can now. Uh, export video from the web page so you can choose number of cameras and export you can reset the alarm if the NVR is beeping maybe hard disk change some camera went offline it will start beeping you can reset the alarm then uh, you can check okay this all is fine status we will see this you can also check the layout size change the layout size you can make full screen and uh, aspect ratio okay this is something we will see next camera list layouts events as it happens search button for playback ai search if you have ai camera you can search for a person you can search for gender male female clothing color and so on now let's see how to add the camera directly as soon as you go to setup it takes you to the register page where you can auto search for all the cameras in your network when you search for the cameras you will find i will add these two cameras which belongs to me i will add them enter the password like i said i have already pre-configured the ip i have already pre-configured the password for the camera if you want to know you can learn about it from that youtube video i talked about eight steps to configure or you can attend a camera configuration training all right if uh, yeah then after this click on test connection done click apply connected not saved it's only connected you can preview and check okay this camera has been added so many times so many nvrs are having this okay it's fine uh, and for now okay you can skip this connected after that click on apply I think that's why it didn't work the preview didn't work so it's okay first save it once you add click on ok to save so you see it is saving it takes some time okay now the preview will work now the preview will work all right so in the previous version we can do preview immediately but now in the new version you have to first save and then only you can do preview so slight difference but it's okay not a big deal okay what is the objective of this preview button the idea is you know what camera you added next manual manual option is to add an on with camera you can add a third party on with camera for port you can just put port number 80 80 is for web page 
so enter the on with ip address so i can add even a hanwha camera as on with <clears throat> let's say 3334 if there is a ip camera with 34 it will get added yeah okay so there is some camera 34 it's our camera apply first and then Okay, on with does not so okay no issue next is uh, under manual there is also R RTSP if your camera even does if it does not have on with maybe the project is very old a 10 year old project using old cameras doesn't have on with then you can use RTSP uh, for how to add RTSP RTSP stream uh, URL for let's say a Bosch camera or Sony or whatever you can type in Google and uh, find out let me use uh, my browser <clears throat> RTSP usage with Bosch so what is the portal what is the URL it will be mentioned here you can check you can search for other brands let's say Pelco what is the URL for Sarex camera even we have RTSP Hanwa, but for us you can directly add you don't need to use RTSP uh, If a camera does not have on with then you have to rely on RTSP option What is RTSP? It's the protocol to send a video any camera which is sending video will use RTSP protocol So for sure you can get RTSP for any video device. It may not be a camera. It may be a some any camera which is sending video maybe some uh, intercom device or some kind of camera device you can use to get a video stream you can record it okay once it loads i can show that uh, what else rtsp url for hanwha Okay, so that site is loading. So here in Hanwha website, RTSP, camera IP address, profile number, and media. You should also enter username and password in the URL. Okay, so it depends. Next is, uh, okay, now this is loaded. You can find here, what is the RTSP URL? IP address slash stream one, stream two. So you get the idea. This you have to practice and check. Right now, this is not the scope for to cover that particular topic. Okay. Now, once you have added the camera, next is channel setup. <coughs> Not much to do here. Uh, in case you want audio recording, you have to enable on to turn on the audio recording. Video, of course, it should be on so you can record the video. Camera name, you can edit. Okay, This is something critical. Camera name, you can say camera 1. You can say 001 entrance and so on but very few characters so you, in this case if you're using SSM you can do camera name in SSM for example if I'm using a VMS and I have NBR and uh, let me just fix this first I can type as many characters as I want so here there's no limit in the VMS side so you can do the naming on the VMS if you're going or planning to use VMS. If you don't have plans, it's okay. You do it on the NVR. It will permanently be in the NVR. And in the VMS, you can uh, you don't have to do it again. In the VMS, we have an option. Uh, you don't have to memorize this. This is part of VMS training. You can, you can pull out the name directly from the NVR. So you don't have to re-enter. Okay, so it is safe to enter on the NVR side because it's permanently saved in the NVR. Next, camera setup. Whenever you add a camera, whatever camera profiles are available will get added. But there is one critical profile called live or NVR. You never create it, it is automatically created. Even if we are adding an NVR, uh, what do you call the uh, 
on with camera it will try to create using on with uh, protocol we will try to create a profile called live for nvr if it is not created you have to create it and by the way live does not mean uh, when you see the camera uh, in full screen it will show full resolution when you see the camera in full screen it shows full resolution but when you see in 3 by 3 4 by 4 layout it will automatically switch to lower resolution all right if you don't have lower resolution it will say video cannot be displayed all right and this is the uh, it's called dynamic switching of streams so that your pc resource will not be overloaded right your computer may be i5 i7 uh, you may not be able to see all 64 cameras full hd right let's watching 64 full hd movies so this is why there's a dynamic switching of profile takes place so the cpu is still kept uh, under control right so you don't get memory is not overloaded so we use this to um, do that so do not change most of the customers go and change this don't change this keep it as 800 or lower okay unless someone from our team advises you okay because when let's say when you do live view uh, for uh, one camera or two camera it will go to full resolution okay uh, okay not here in ssm it will go to full resolution uh, let's say this layout size is weird okay so 2560 by 192 which is fine right when you're in full focus on just one camera you get full resolution same here in ssm when i am uh, seeing the camera in multiple profile it is 800 by 600 but when i see the camera in one screen it will switch to full megapixel if i try to see it in two by two and okay let's increase the size <coughs> it will change to full resolution let's say two just two cameras you're seeing it will change to full resolution when you go back to higher density you know in vms we can go even 100 cameras up. you can go let's say 64 so all this it will go to low resolution so because of this you are now able to use less monitor see more camera at uh, 25 frames whatever you set on the camera so here camera setup live for nvr 800 by 625 okay do not change this that's the point and uh, if you don't have it you add it now uh, if you whenever you add a camera make sure you update the camera firmware in the training youtube video the, it is covered how to update the camera firmware uh, we will see how to update nvr in this video now we can take a break and uh, come back and continue for the remaining part of the training
Okay, let's uh, continue. Okay. We did cover a few things in the previous break session. What did we start with? We started with identifying physically about an NVR. New one, old one. What is the objective of that? The objective is in the new one, the initial configuration is easier. In the old one, the initial configuration requires some extra step. And what is that extra step, uh, which I did not cover? So for that, you can, uh, I would just recommend you to go to this. Uh, I will send you the link also, that's not training. Uh, you just go to this uh, e official, it's okay. Playlist. There is uh, NBR playlist. Where is that? NBR here. NBR initialization. So the old one, you have to physically connect a, a monitor behind the NBR for the first time. Okay, you cannot do, use the web page directly. You have to physically connect a monitor behind the NBR. So here, and then you will see this menu, initial visit, language setting, initial password setting, all that you will have to do physically. You have to connect a monitor behind. That's the only difference, but otherwise nothing else. Okay, so you got the idea. Here you will set up the IP address. Once you set up the IP address, then open the web page and add the camera. Okay, only difference is physically you have to connect. In the new models, directly from the web page, we were able to set up the initial password and everything. Okay, after that, once you set up the password, once you set up the language, once you set up the date and time, NVR is good. You know, imagine buying a mobile phone for the first time. You set up your password, you set up the date and time, you set up the region, right? Same thing you have to do with the NVR device. It's an, it's a, it's like a mini server, right? It's mini PC, it's something like that. So you have to set up the device according to your region, language, all that. Okay, same concept. Next, once you have the initial setup done, you go ahead and register the device from the setup menu. Once you register the device, click OK to save. Otherwise, it will not get saved. For example, if I go ahead and add a camera and uh, forget to save. <coughs> connected, OK, apply, done, connected. But if I don't say OK, I go and come back. Only three cameras will be there. That third, fourth camera will not get added. So some customers they keep adding and coming back they're like why is the NVR not adding because they forgot to click the ok button right then we talked about manual the next is channel setup manual was on with camera third party camera or tsp that was manual right um, next is channel setup where you were able to edit the camera names it is okay to edit the camera names here um, and uh, this is for audio only again we don't touch this initially forget about all this initially focus on adding the camera then setting up the camera name check the camera setup each camera you can check what are the profiles available camera one it has h264 h265 live for nvr we know live for nvr is uh, reserved for multi-view what is multi-view? When you see more than one camera in a layout, it will be used to view uh, in that resolution. Okay, I can, if you wait after the training, if you want to know, you can ask a question. I will explain why 800 by 600, is it okay? How to justify to customer? I can explain that. We cover all this in fund foundation course, but you can, uh, you can, if you want to know, you can just ask, we can clarify. Next, uh, camera setup. H264 is there, H265 is there. H265 is, as you know, a better codec and will take lower bandwidth. For example, if I use H265, 5 megapixel, 25 frames, 
and click OK. <coughs> it will save this setting on the camera. And uh, okay, let's go to channel number two, channel number three. So all the cameras, there is two profiles, H.264, H.265. H.265 will take lower storage because of higher compression standard. It will take lower bandwidth and consequently lower storage. Okay, so uh, we have to use H.265 for recording but for uh, live view we can use h264 because it is h264 is less processor intensive and live view we are not recording it just comes and you discard right live as it comes live view comes and then it's discarded it's not being recorded so you can use h264 for recording it will be less on the pc it will be less uh, bandwidth on the I mean less uh, processor usage on the PC again if you want to know what is H.264 what is H.265 we have foundation course we will have one in March you can attend that okay next is uh, um, profile profile setup live my request don't change it leave it as it is let the NVR decide what is the best resolution to show depending on the tile size when it is full tile size it will change to full resolution when it is low tile size it will change to low resolution let the NVR do the job you can leave it as auto again people change it unless someone recommend it to you you don't change leave it as it is. okay uh, record record what are you going to record currently automatically the nvr will record h264 nvr has no idea right what to record you have to tell the nvr stop recording h264 it's too high too much bandwidth uh, record h265 record h265 so i will save some storage space bandwidth okay you can do that h265 you can choose in the nvr what to record you know this is a powerful feature because many nvrs in the market they don't have this what you see is what you record they don't have multi profiling whatever you see it will record the same thing so if you that means you want to, some re countries you have to record only 10 frames but that means you have to view also 10 frames if you have an NVR which does not support multi profile, but for Hanwha, we have option you can view 25 frames, but you can record at 10 frames. So, multi profile next remote. We have three profiles, not just two. Let's say you want to view the NVR on a VMS SSM VMS. Okay, if you want to view it on the VMS and the VMS is in the same building, in the same floor, in the same network. You can tell the NVR, I don't have bandwidth issue, just uh, show me full resolution. Whatever is the maximum resolution from the camera, H264, go ahead and stream it out through the network port. Okay, another point. Maybe there are projects where you have multi-branch, different uh, showrooms and different branches in the city. You have 20 branches, but the head office is in uh, a different uh, city. Maybe uh, I let me take a Saudi example. You have in uh, Riyadh 20 branches, Jeddah 20 branches, and uh, Kobar another 10 branches. But the head office is in Riyadh, again in a different location. So in that case, you are depending on internet bandwidth, and you have limited bandwidth. In that case, you can tell the NVR, okay, uh, don't stream full 5 megapixel. I already have only few bandwidth. So in that case, you can tell the NVR stream 800 by 600, 0.5 Mbps per camera. You know, you can reduce, you can control. You can reduce even this further. You can choose a completely different profile. You can say, uh, send me uh, a mobile profile, one SIF. If you have only one Mbps connection, you can control what to be remotely sent. Okay, so this is a good feature. Done. So these are the things you have to work on. Most likely, you are not going to use this. Uh, I mean, you you will use remote profile, but you will not be using the default setting. The default setting is less, so you have to make it higher because your PC will be in the same network. Your SSM PC will be in the same piece uh, in the same project. Right? You have 10 NVRs. You will have one central PC for two central PC. For example, your project may look like this. This is a schematic. 
this is most of you may have seen this i use this drawing a lot camera and we are camera and we are camera and we are cameras and we are cameras and we are different floors all are in nvr but it's in the same local network i have a core switch and i want to monitor in a central location i have three monitors six nvrs how do i see them together i will have a vms this is free to use i will add all the cam all the nvrs i will add to the vms automatically cameras will get added then to the vms i will connect my pc and view okay so in this case it's all local network so what uh what will be streamed from the nvr from the nvr this stream is called a remote stream because it's going through the network okay so it's called remote stream the remote can be local or it can be on the internet but the word remote means going through the network so you can say it's in the local lan so send full resolution okay so this also uh, a common issue because most of them don't change it they keep it as live or nvr and then when they go to vms they are they are you know this is what the customer says um, from the nvr camera is good resolution resolution is good but from vms quality is reduced this is the complaint this is what happens then they do their own investigation and they figure out ssm is showing live or nvr then they go back and change the camera profile they will change it to uh, full resolution then what happens then they cause more issues when they try to see 5 by 5 it says cannot display you got the idea so they make it even worse then what it was all right so this is what you have to do you have to change remote profile instead of live or nvr you have to make it h264 okay okay now let's rephrase uh, the core steps for adding to the nvr first step was initializing nvr what is that language password ip address then register the camera ensure profile h265 is as per your requirement local requirement what is this profile h265 go to camera setup check h265 25 frames do you want to record 25 or not otherwise change it to 10 okay you can change one by one or you can use device manager to change as a bulk for all the camera together for that just check the camera configuration okay so change the profile then fourth check the profile setup what is being recorded this is on camera what is being recorded profile setup live no change record change to h265 for the best storage so you will have uh, good uh, savings on your storage change to h265 you can change all at once or you can change one by one you can do that okay so change to h265 when you change to h265 whatever is saved on the camera whatever you did in the camera setup it, it will automatically pull it you, you cannot change here you have to do it on the camera side then remote profile if you are going to use vms in the future do it right now change all the profile to uh, for the vms change it to h264 do it right now and save it get done now record schedule most of your projects will have continuous recording or may have event recording leave it in that case the default however if you have only motion only motion make it all red and click and make it all red apply to all other cameras so now your entire camera will be recording on motion only all right if you want to do continuous only you do that but if you're doing continuous you can keep even this it's okay it's not going to change uh, only you will get extra marking saying where there is motion it will have some different color so it's fine so either this or event only okay then most of the regions they use continuous so i'm going to leave it as it is 
in case you don't want to record you can also use no recording okay again don't forget to click okay to save next is record setup here and uh, if you are doing a continuous recording excuse me if you are doing continuous recording what should be recorded from the camera full don't use others unless you are familiar or someone guide you um, don't change it but just ensure it's not off if it is off that means even if you put continuous recording schedule even if you put continuous recording what is the meaning of continuous recording for channel 1 according to continuous recording channel 1 you are saying don't bother switch off it means it will not record that camera okay if there is even if you put continuous recording it will not record if you say i frame it will record only one frame every second uh, if you put uh, or one frame every 2 second this is a different setting um, if you put full frame it will record full h26 uh five whatever your plan to record in the record profile it will record completely so whatever you have assigned in the record profile 10 12 25 25 it will record that entirely that's called full event record if there is a motion what frame rate it should record should it record full yes keep it as it is full means whatever you have configured as a record profile full full frame rate means if it is 10 it will record entirely 10 okay if you change if you say uh, for example during motion uh, you say i frame then it will only record one frames during motion or two frames or one every two seconds like that i frame so this if you ever you are having motion recording you must make full by default actually this is off okay if you have motion recording make sure it is also full so both should be same simple both should be same if you have motion recording okay then and uh, this and this don't have this is just uh, information this is not a ch don't have to, you cannot change this uh, before motion if um, if it is motion recording how how much seconds before it should start so you know how the motion occurred and uh, how much time after the motion occurred you can fix if you are doing audio recording you have to enable audio recording again here right so because audio is related to privacy it has more steps to when it comes to audio recording okay in the cctv actually you are recording video it's okay but audio is considered as uh, intrusion of privacy you have to make sure you have the authority to include audio recording in many countries it is banned so it can go to a legal case so that's why it is takes time i mean it is a different step anyhow there is a video on how to do audio recording if you have such projects just watch the recorded video and uh, guideline video you will get a full idea but right now let's focus on how to do the most 99% of the projects how to configure add camera make sure camera names are given make sure h265 profiles are as per your regulation 5 5 mega 10 frames 2 mega 10 frames whatever is your regulation and uh, profile your nvr you say for live view use what you want it doesn't matter for recording use h265 if you are sending to vms uh, send full resolution because customer likes to see full quality then for recording schedule leave it as it is if you are doing continuous or motion recording okay then if ever you are doing only motion then you change so you can uh, your storage will be entirely different in that case record setup again if you are doing motion recording make sure even recording falls under motion is full it's not switched off okay then uh, after that record option again uh, in record option there is something you have to disable this is only for the new model old model is not there dual recording you can uncheck apply okay what is this dual recording you can when i uncheck on a, on a mobile app let's say if you disable dual recording 
and you have a bandwidth issue okay you are recording 5 megapixel but your bandwidth is only 1 mbps there is no way you can do a playback because the camera nvr will send 5 mbps and your network is only 1 mbps so in that case you have option to record even the two resolution one full resolution one low resolution that's why it's called dual recording again not everybody is interested in this feature because you need more space and all that just disable it unless you have a need for it okay these are custom requirements okay disable overwrite enable um, again this 400 you can leave it as it is if ever if ever there is a project okay listen if ever there's a project you have 30 cameras out of 30 25 cameras you want to record for 30 days the remaining five camera you want to record 90 days maybe some critical area in that case you say custom retention period then <clears throat> you have to enter actually 30 and for each and some cameras you have to enter 90 so that will be saved for a long time okay so this is customization all right this is a good feature to have because majority of the nvr in the market if it is 30 days the entire nvr all the camera is 30 days you cannot customize per camera okay so we have that option next event rule we will see later on now your nvr is good and has started recording okay can uh, okay we would uh, do the playback and all that in the vms uh, we will see that in search you can search for events yes yeah, search and search for setup okay we will see that later on okay then go back to uh, device okay Okay, rest of the setup we will see as we move forward. IP address, we've done that. Um, system, okay. System settings. If you want to take a backup, you can take a backup of your settings. If you want to uh, upgrade the NVR to a new firmware, you can upgrade from here. You can click browse, upload the file. What file will you upload? You can download the firmware from the website hanwa-security.com. You see, there's a lot of videos here. Um, the idea of putting videos is after the training, when you are on the site, you cannot watch the entire two hour video. You are looking for specific information. So that's why you have, we have specific fee, uh, specific configuration video. Okay. Now here, uh, type in the model number of the NVR. Let's say we are in <coughs> 6400 TV4. Type in the exact model number of the NVR. Scroll down. <coughs> Click on firmware. See the file name. Uh, it may not be same sometimes. It's okay. Just click again download download the file it is a zip file you can unzip unzip and then upload here what if you have too many nvrs in that case you can use device manager you can uh, enter the password for all the nvrs close then click um, on the plus button login so it will log into all the NVRs. You should get a tick box. Click on this plus button in Wisenet Device Manager and log in. So in Device Manager, it tells me all of them are running old version because I have internet connection. It tells me all are old version. Okay, so now I can update. I can uh, select whichever is successfully logged in. Click Firmware Upgrade. Okay, so if you have two NVRs, it will be automatically piled up. You just have to upload once. Then both the NVRs will get updated at the same time. All right, can be done. Uh, there is also option to download from the device manager. And uh, 
but this one it can take some time so you can choose which all uh, NBRs you want to uh, Here you will be able to choose. Okay, I need use keyboard, control, control S. This one, this one. Which all NVS you want to download? You can say start, and then it will download. Okay. Once it finish, you can leave it for download. Go for launch. Come back. Once it finishes, then you can say upgrade. It will automatically upgrade. You can give a time after night. Uh, recommend to update maximum four or five at a time. Don't update too many devices. Your network may not be able to handle because your project is still under construction or you don't have the full network switches up and running, so it's not recommended. Or you can do one by one. Okay, this also you can update, apply, go in the evening, come back next day, it will be updated. Or you can do it, leave one or two hours for this, so it will update one by one. Okay. Uh, it doesn't take much time the new ones are quicker but it depends on how many devices you have if you have one device five minutes is enough so roughly you can keep five minutes for one device okay all right then um, <clears throat> now once you have set up your nvr Most of the projects, you will need a central viewing application. For the central viewing application, uh, what you have to do is <coughs> buy a PC, which is having i7 spec, 16 GB RAM spec. Okay, so think of it this way. Um, to back to this drawing. Yeah. So I have many NVRs, but I want to view centrally. Okay, I want to view centrally. Maybe you have just one PC, fine. Or maybe you have five PCs, fine, no issue, right? So you have different options. You can split the application. If you have five PCs, one PC will be core and client. The remaining PC will be only client, okay? What is the, what is the meaning of core? Core means uh, all the NVRs will speak to just one device. All right, from that device, the traffic will be distributed to all the client PCs. From that particular device, all the uh, traffic will be diverted to the client PCs. So you have uh, one core device and multiple client device. If you have only one PC, you can use it as a core and a client, same PC, no issue. Okay, each uh, PC, the core PC can handle up to 3000 channels. So roughly pro most of your projects you can handle with just one PC. You can add up to 3000 cameras using NVR. If you're having NVR, it's like adding the NVRs. The recording is still happening in the NVR. It will only take the uh, information. Uh, for example, for example, how to do this let's say after you have download or finished nvr configuration uh, you download a firmware updated all that is done everything's okay um, by the way here you can check the manual you can get certificates you can see uh, data sheet uh, cad drawing all that you get specific to that product you can find here Okay, now SSM, VMS, how to use when you have multiple NVRs? First thing, go to products, server and software, go to management and analytics. Then scroll down, go for uh, SSM, uh, remove this one, go to 2.1. This is the latest version, click on this. Don't go to the old one, go to the new one, 2.1. Download. Download. Software. Okay. When you go to the software, you will find core and PC client, console client. 
download these two core and client and install on the same pc no issue but if you have multiple clients five clients core and client should be in only one pc the remaining pc will have client okay client application done okay now in this particular pc where i am remotely connected i have installed console and i have also installed core server so this is the core application oh, just let's close the device manager this is the core application service manager is running media server is running when you install the core application you will get this app both the services are running done it should be running make sure okay network cable is plugged in and all that everything should be fine after that open the console app let me close this uh, let me also uh, reset Okay, so this can take a while. It's a multi site. Okay. So while it does, uh, so back to this code. Um, code application, you can, uh, once you download, okay, what is the meaning of system manager? System manager means database, media server means uh, it will, the service responsible for receiving the streams from the NBR, live view, recorded view from the NBR. Okay, database, once you, uh, what is the database? It is used to manage, if you log into the VMS, automatically you're logged into the NBR. So it manages the IP addresses of all the NBR, the username passwords of all the NBR, the user rights, all that is managed from the system manager. Okay. Completed, restart the program, blah, 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 okay. Now, after you finish uh, the core application, install the client. Once you install the client, um, you will have an interface which looks like this. Okay. Then, uh, for the first, I mean, if you have only one PC, it's okay. You can use 1270.0.1. But when you have multiple PCs, uh, you enter the IP address of the first core PC. Because you're as a client, you will log into the core PC, okay, and uh, create a username. We will create by default admin at the rate one twenty. Okay. So log in. Once you log in for the first time, everything is fine. Sometimes uh, it will ask you create a password. SSM for the you are installing for the first time it will ask you to create a password you just create initial password and login that's it just like you do with the NBR it will ask after you do this it will take you to the main page monitoring page it looks like this fresh nothing to display no devices on the on the list go to plus configuration again plus configuration select your server make sure your IP address is correct where you install the SSM core that should be the IP here then click on the first button register device and add all your NBRs so for now I'm going to add one two three four five okay I'm going to add all these NBR username password skip this okay let me make this okay it's fine okay close i have added all the nvr whatever camera is in the nvr will also get added here i don't have to do anything red means it's recording 
Now go back to monitoring. I can see all my devices here. I can just double click. Camera starts to show live view. I can have 25 layout. Double click. Double click. So this uh, camera is okay. Offline, that's okay. So uh, here. So this is how I can see all the cameras in a single layout, right? I can play back. The recording is there. I can play back all the cameras simultaneously. So I don't need, so if they are not recording, it's okay. But if I don't need a separate uh, window for each NBR, I can see them all together. I can play back all together. I can export the videos for uh, all the cameras. So I can say all the cameras. You saw this button, CD button. I can export the video directly from here. Okay. So this is the objective of uh, SSM to use with NBR. Then there are many functions we can do. This is part of SSM training, how to create a layout, how to create uh, groups, how to add maps, how to create pop-up. If some event happen in camera one, how to create a pop-up, all that you can do it in SSM, we will see that. Even in NVR, you can do NVR pop-up event action. So this all you can explore as you practice. There is something called event detection, uh, motion detection. You can receive motion events in the NVR also. You can trigger, uh, you can create a rule in the NVR. If something happened in camera one, what should be the action? Send it as a pop-up, send it, send a more work PDZ camera, send an email. So this can be done on the NVR side. NVR um, uh, under event, there is also alarm input. Each NVR is having relay contacts. You can trigger, uh, you can uh, connect a door contact to the NVR directly. If someone opens the NVR door or NVR cabinet, it can you can create a pop-up, you can trigger a relay contact. So quite feature rich. Oh yes, and then storage, which we forgot to cover, is the storage management. <coughs> In the NVR, you have to insert hard disk, right? Once you insert the hard disk, for the first time, you have to format the hard disk, okay? insert the hard disk and format the hard disk. It will be recording in all the hard disk by default, all right? And one key point as a project engineer is for you to check whether the hard disk that is inside is recommended by Hanwha. We are not supplying, so the hard disk is supplied by the distributor or from your contact with the HDD supplier. We have a sheet called HDD compatibility. Under HDD compatibility, you can download the latest. We keep updating. Every three to four weeks, you'll have a new updated compatibility list because the hardest vendors are always adding new models. So we are also updating. There are two brands you'll find, <coughs> Seagate and Western Digital. So enter your model number. Let's say my model number of the NBR is PRN. 6410 you, you will check here in the main index group sheet prn 6410 is the leader of the group this is the group leader this is the sub models okay if your nvr is 6410 b4 it's fine you have to look for the group leader take the group leaders model number copy and paste so whichever hard disk is supported in the group leader the sub models also support so you'll find here eight terabyte this is a model number 10 terabyte model number 10 okay again you can go down eight 10 terabyte from you will see the model number so make sure this is what you are inserting in the nvr is the recommended hard disk okay insert and format that's it if ever you have read uh, in the project, this model is not having RAID. Uh, let me go to some other camera. Yeah, this uh, this one, this guy has RAID. So storage, RAID. <coughs> so there is an option called enable RAID. All you have to do is enable, simple. But in order to enable RAID, 
you will uh, uh, it will ask you do you want to enable for the entire nvr or each array so if you remember we were talking about the nvr data sheet uh, here we go array Twelve hard disk, two arrays, each is six. Whereas if thirty-two channel, single array, RAID five, RAID six, eight hard disks. Okay, so if you have two array, you can create two RAID five for each group, right? You don't have to create RAID five for the entire group. You can create separately for each group. Okay, so. Uh, back. All right, so back to the NVR. So here, this model has only one group. Okay, so select that group and say enable rate. When you enable rate, uh, there is only one condition. In order to activate rate, you have to put certain number of hard disk. Okay, certain number of hard disk. If you put only two, it will say cannot enable. If you put three, it will say cannot enable. Four, five it will still say cannot enable it requires minimum six hard disk to activate raid feature per array if you have two arrays each array you have to put minimum six all right the new models minimum six hard disk is required to activate raid uh, the old models minimum five hard disk some four so it changes model to model for that you can just ask the hanwa team uh, but the new models at the moment, all the models minimum six hard disk. I will give you an example. Uh, let's say, let's take one NVR. Okay, let's take this itself. One nine two, one six eight, or one dot two one four. Setup. Ah, this one doesn't have. Let's take, uh, let's take this one. Device, storage device, RAID. Okay. If I say use insufficient hard disk to build a RAID, why? Because I have only one hard disk here. I need minimum six. Why was I able to activate RAID in this model? Because I have minimum six. So another NVR, only one hard disk is there. I cannot activate it. So this is something you have to keep in mind. There are many projects, they forget about this. They buy only one hard disk and they try to activate it. It is not possible. And then who's gonna pay the cost for additional five hard disk, right? So uh, now that you know, make sure you check the hard disk quantity is sufficient, right? And uh, the number of minimum hard disk is dependent on the model. Some models need four, some five, but now majority of the new models by default now they need six. So you have to keep this in mind. Okay, so you can check about it and go accordingly. All right. And uh, so that brings us to the end of the training for today. And uh, each of you will get an email each of you will get an email with uh, the recording, with the PPT, just a reference document. And then you will also get and, uh, a workbook link, a workbook link. Okay, so let me show you what is a workbook. <clears throat> So uh, this is the workbook link.
So the questions will be here. Check the model number and and find out which series, how many cameras, does it have RAID 5? Then uh, what is the default IP of NVR, what we talked about, uh, how to do the initial setup, then how to do initialization, what are the things that was asked during the initialization, um, what is the name of the tool used for the configuration uh, device manager, right? When we, for bulk configuration of NVR IP address, we used device manager. And uh, okay, we'll come to that. Then uh, you can request me for a remote access. I will be, I can issue a remote access PC. So you can practice the questions. For example, uh, you can, each of you, you can add, uh, for, depending on the PC number, you can, you will be assigned two cameras. You can use that cameras, add to your NVR and practice. So your demo PC will look like this. So it will look like this, PC number four, which means you have access to 38 IP address camera, 39 camera. You can use any of the NVR and practice. Okay, so you can practice here, add the camera, change the resolution, change the camera name, uh, change the camera schedule, enable motion recording, check the NVR log, how to update the camera firmware, NVR firmware, sorry and uh, other questions so you will you can practice this this will give you extra points for the quiz uh, around 15 to 20 points you can get from practicing the workbook if you don't want if you're confident you can directly attend the exam um, but you will not get the extra 20 points so you can practice accordingly all right then uh, as we close there are just uh, closing points is device manager on our website you have to when you go to our website and you go to English uh, there is something called support online tool under online tool you will find uh, uh, device manager you can download device manager here okay okay and then how to use SSM with the VMS there is uh, the video which I talked about. Please refer that video. Go to playlist. NBR. How to initialize, how to add camera, how to export video. And uh, how to register NVR, camera name, okay. How to install SSM and NVR, uh, including viewer license activation. So there is a free license which you have to activate. So it will also show you how to activate the free license. Anyhow, I will be covering this in the SSM VMS training. This is not part of NVR training. Uh, so I'll be covering that in detail in the SSM training. So today's training, you have, you have the focus is, the question is mainly on, can we use SSM? Why do we need SSM? Then it will be about how to add camera to NVR, what are the steps, how to change the profile and those things. Okay, then uh, lastly, in case you forget the password for the NVR, behind the NVR, there is a small reset button. Um, say, uh,
just a second. I think. Uh, Okay, factory default reset. Okay, password reset. In case you forget the admin password, in case you forget the admin password, there is a reset button in the NVR. It is uh, usually near the HDMI port or near this alarm port. You will find a small button. There is no label on it. If you hold it for five seconds, the recording will remain but the main admin password alone will be reset so it will ask you with a pop-up and tell you password has been reset please enter a new admin password all right that's it recording settings other settings everything will not will remain it will not change except the admin password so what does this tell you you have to make sure your nvr is safely locked in a place and the reset button is available in case you forget the admin password all right. All right. So uh, that's all for today. Thank you so much for attending. I will be sending you the required documents and also guideline on how to practice remotely. Each of you can get access to a remote lab practice. If you are new to the system, practice by yourself uh, with the workbook side by side, you can practice and get full experience. And you will also get a quiz link. Once you complete the quiz link within uh, uh, roughly 20 to 30 days we will do the correction we will send you the prepare the certificate once uh, depending on score and send you the certificate all right uh, any further questions you can post in the chat window otherwise we can close the session thank you